uh, while both teams having the main roster. So it's gonna be really interesting. Nip now have a new jungler, so I, I can't really say how strong they're gonna be. I think uh, Holberto is really good. I think if Ku plays not this in, I think Holberto can beat him. Coach taking a fight, he's gonna level on Kikis. And he's landing the Q there. There's a meditate actually coming out from Kikis, trying to keep himself healthy enough as Babunia comes around the side as well. They're gonna be able to lock up Ku, but have they got the damage to finish him off? He gets wow. kicked over the top. He's got insane mechanics and uh, he's just really good at the game. Like my playstyle, that aggressive, keep trying to kill the jungle one on one, or prevent him from ganking my team. I think Anapi's uh, solo laners are really strong and the bottom lane, they just snowballed really hard. Like in the first game, I remember that when they got ganked by Nocturne. Black Shield on the Breeze, there it is! And there's a jump in, a lot of damage coming in from Nocturne, oh. but gets exhausted, has to jump back. Chrysalid with the Q, doesn't hit it! Oh, the finding. finding! He's got no health, first blood goes to Freeze! They played it so perfectly. I think we in C9 are one of the stronger bot lanes in EU, but Nip bot lane is no pushover. I hope Cloud9 is going to give the A game tomorrow and then we have the best possible series. We're trying to show to the European scene and everyone who's the better team in the Challenger series. Hey everyone, welcome back to the 2014 European Challenger Series Spring Playoffs. It's finally time for the finals. A best of five between top ranked Ninjas in Pajamas and the second seed Cloud9 Eclipse. Hey guys, I'm David Freak Turley. Alongside me for the finals here is Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler. How's it going? Great, Freak. Let's get into the games. Let's do it, guys. It's going to be fun. It's going to be the last match of the Challenger Spring Series. Now, while both these teams already have a spot in the Summer Promo Tournament, uh, it's already been locked down, of course, uh, only one of them will have the chance to make playoff history here and be the only sort of winner of the Challenger Series. It's going to be a rematch of the Series 1 Finals, where C9E did 2-0 NIP. Uh, and you know, took the first place in Series 1. But despite that loss, Ninjas in Pajamas are the heavy favorites here today. And they also made history yesterday already with yeah. the first Challenger Series perfect game. Mm -hmm. However, we have to remember that LCS last year did have a perfect game as well. you got to give credit to Dignitas. They were able to also pull it off. But talking about Challenger Series, the Ninjas in Pajamas did not give up a kill, a dragon, a tower, or a baron in their win over Reason Gaming. Yeah, so while the Ninjas stormed past Reason in the semifinals, it did take three back and forth games for Cloud9 Eclipse to float past Denial Esports. As you said earlier, though, they have already beaten NIP in Challenger, so if they want to do it again, they'll need their jungler Ko to step up. Yeah, Ko is definitely integral to cloud 9 success. Yesterday, he had a great game on Lee Sin in Game 1 versus Denial, putting up a double-digit KDA in their win. But in Game 2, he took that Mr. Yi, I guess as we're calling it now, yep. um, and he did not have quite as sharp of a game. cloud 9 did suffer a loss in the second one there to Denial, but as we know, they came back and won it in the end. Yeah, they're a pretty strong team, of course. So, uh, you know, let's actually get ourselves into the game, of course. Talk about the starting lineups on the blue side. Uh, for the odd-numbered games, they're going to be Ninjas in pajamas, Zoro Zero in the top lane, Holberto in the jungle, Nuke Duck in mid, Freeze on AD carry, and Mithy on support. And spawning in the red corner, it's Cloud9 Eclipse. Up top, Odoamne in the jungle, Ko, Febibin mid, Yarnin as AD carry, and Voidal supporting. So it's going to be a fun one to watch for, actually. Uh, again, it's it's on 4.5. I feel like I'm kind of blue in the face saying it, but it's really interesting to me to see the new stuff that comes out. Um, we finally saw Master Yi get a win yes, uh, today, actually. He went 0-3 yesterday, but uh, Kikas pulled it out made it work here. Yeah, he did. Feral Flare junglers are pretty fun. I know you're a jungler by trade. Yeah. So. Feral Flare. So Feral Flare is an investment. Okay. Um, it pays off really big dividends late game. Um I think that the other jungle items are still very strong, especially mm -hmm. on junglers like Kha'Zix and Elise and stuff like that. So even though there's all this hype around attack speed junglers and Feral Flare, it's not the end-all be-all of the new jungle. Yeah. It's just more options. And since everybody's talking about NIP being this oh late-game team, they want to have calm early game, yeah. I expect Cloud9 to actually have pressure in the early game, especially since Ko is the you know the focal point of this Cloud9 team, yeah. and he is going to be trying to run that Lee Sin, trying to run uh, like Cossacks or something early, get a lot of action, a lot of uh, jungle invading going yeah. on early. Yeah, and, and at the same time, I mean, we did see him bring up Master Yi once, it didn't really work for the team. But... Yeah, I don't think he'll do that at versus NIP. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I know uh, Joe and uh, Quickshot talked to Dexter and was like, "Well, how do you beat NIP? You are on that roster and all that." Uh -huh. And he's like, "Well, um, basically, you either get out late gamed 
which I don't think is the C9E way. Uh, I know Reason tried it once in the first game. That did not pay off for them. Uh, of course, Reason did get 2-0'd anyway, but uh, you could try the out late game style. Again, I don't think it's 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 C9E style, but it's an option. The other one he said is, yeah, you could get out ahead early. It actually mentioned champions like Elise, or, or I mean, champions like Lee Sin, I think, specifically. Yeah, so did but, they in the video. The team, yeah. the team was like, <laughs> as long as Ko doesn't get Lee Sin, oh, on champions, not Lee Sin, then yeah. they'll be fine. So yeah. they'll probably ban Lee Sin. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also interesting uh, to you know talk about the past with these teams. So when they met in Spring 1, actually, uh, it was interesting because NIP's old roster had Amin on it. And Amin is too young to play in the LCS, so NIP, with yeah. their sides being LCS, already have a fully LCS-ready roster. Um, whereas for C9, yeah, actually, Ko is underage for a little while. So mm -hmm. um, he's been brought into the lineup anyway just to help win the Challenger Series. But basically, Ninjas and Pajamas had to find a new jungler. In the Spring 1 playoffs, they brought in uh, Shacker, formerly of EG, and he did not have a very good series with them, and they lost that 1-2-0. One, one of the games was really, really close, but ultimately, they then replaced Shacker, brought in Holberto. Holberto's been having a much better time, but I feel like is not quite to the same level of a Min, who was like this like extremely well-regarded, very aggressive player, who was like mm -hmm. a godlike Lee Sin player, would give the team some early edge. Again, I think Holbert was very, very good, but we're seeing kind of like a different NIP from last time these teams met. I think they have a stronger jungler than when they were running Shacker, and yeah. I think that older 2-0 maybe doesn't, you know, play into to uh, doesn't really come into consideration here. Yeah, I definitely think this will be a competitive match uh, yeah. at the very least. Um, so I'm very excited to see how it will roll out because, as you said, Cloud9 with this jungler, Ko, even though he's underage right now, he's really strong, and him being on the team kind of makes Cloud9 eclipse. Mm -hmm have a few similarities to Cloud9 in North America in the LCS. Like yeah. Cloud9 North America, they base a lot of their early game around Meteos invading jungle. Same thing with Cloud9 Eclipse. They have Ko. He's looking to fight the other jungler. He's trying to get wards down for his team. Mm -hmm. A lot of their success depends on, can he beat the other jungler? And then does he come get hit the lanes ahead? Which yeah. he usually does. Also, they ran Soraka. Yeah, they got so. the Soraka mid. <laughs> and it's fun, too, because they have these these lineups that are like, yeah, we're going to we're gonna push the lanes out. And it's, it's the way that you do it, I think, if you're an early aggressive team you get all your lanes pushed all the time you give the room for the jungler to make moves i know we keep saying it but counter jungling is a team effort your lanes need to help if the jungler's not getting in invades it's your fault i get i feel so bad for all the junglers who get invaded yeah and everyone's just calling them bad and I'm just like, <laughs> it's not his fault their not team's not helping no, I know, I know. It, it's very much teamwork-based. Uh, so then, yeah, you kind of think about the other ways where these games are playing out. Uh, specifically, I think the champion pools are very interesting. So for C9E's mid laner, uh, Febivin, I think he's he used to be lauded as a big assassin player. That was kind of mm -hmm. his way of going about. A lot of Riven would always yeah. get banned away. Zed's a big one. Yasuo even a little bit in there as well. Um, and I want to see how much that kind of stays and how much that goes away with, with new changes and whatnot. I know, of course, Lulu, pretty much every mid laner has had to pick this one up. Uh, the big one I think about is Millennium's Kerp, who is quoted as saying, like, oh, he doesn't think Lulu's a good champion, but they still have to ban it every game anyway because uh -huh. the rest of his team respects it. Uh, and it, it, it's interesting to see, like, how their champion pools are going to change. Are they going to bring out uh, the same champs as everyone else? Is the Master Yi or, like, the Nocturne or Feral Flare mm -hmm. Jungle going to come out to play late game? It's all fun questions to see. Yeah, it is, it is going to be interesting because I think that... What jungler they pick is definitely going to give away what Cloud9 are going to try and attack NIP and IP yeah. with. If they go with one of those Pharah flares, they're going more for the late game. If they get, if they actually get him Lee Sin or if mm -hmm. they get him Kha'Zix something, then they're going to try and have that early game rush down. Yeah, it's absolutely a possibility. And just so you guys know, by the way, why we're on screen and not champs, like we had to replace one of the uh, players' computers real quick. So a couple more minutes, we'll get the game underway uh, before too long. But they'll be getting in. We have like some of the guys in champ select or in, in the game lobby right now. Eventually, they'll join the rest of the way in. Working on it. We're working on it. Don't worry. <laughs> Games are still coming. Not, not a big deal. Uh, but I actually want to continue on that line of thought because when we talk about so far this season, it's like we had kind of the same main AD carries. When Jinx was popular, it helped kind of determine what a team would do because you'd have more late game threat. But it's like it's a bunch of, you know, Lucian and Caitlyn. Sometimes Sivir helps determine the team. Top laners tended to be these tanky bruiser type guys. Occasionally, if it was like Renekton versus Mundo, you had like an early late game focus. But mm -hmm. you had very similar things in all the roles, right? Caitlyn and Lucian both good at sieging, similar kind of personalities. Mid lane was the lane where you actually saw what a team was about. Oh, they're running Needly. Oh, okay, they're going to probably siege us pretty early on. Oh, they're running Orion. Okay, it's a big team fight. It's still a valid point. Yeah, and it is. And it is still, of course, right? It's Zed is a split pushing team, and that's a big one for uh, NIP specifically. But now you actually have that a bit with a jungler, mm -hmm. right? Before it was like, who's the best early game jungler you can find? Okay, well, Evelyn can bypass wards, but she's mostly early game. She can flank for team fights. Lisa, oh, great early game fighter is going to look for ganks. At least great early game fighter, look for ganks, right? All these things down the line. Now you've got champions 
like Nocturne, like Master Yi, who are still okay early game. They still have Red Buff and can hit you. Yeah. But it's like, oh, they're going to go Feral Flare. They're going to go late game. There's a new style to this team now. Now you look at a jungle and say, oh, they're going to look for this. Yeah, there's just... There's almost too many options for junglers <laughs> now. Like, there's so many viable junglers. Yeah. Everybody that you just mentioned, like Evelyn, Vi, uh, Kha'Zix, all these junglers are still really good. Even though there's all this hype around Feral Flare and everyone's trying to do attack speed, mm -hmm. they're still really strong at what they do. You just have to change your playstyle a little bit. Yeah. And since this patch is so new, it's I'm very excited to see you know what kind of styles you can use with your team because it opens up a lot more options. There's yeah. so many options. You can't even ban out jungle anymore. No. There are way too many good junglers. You could maybe ban out styles of jungle. I feel yeah. like you can probably ban out like the top three feral flares and be like, don't run a feral flare strategy. <laughs> then they're like, feral flare vi, screw you. And then it's like, okay, it's really good. Yeah, you've been playing it. I was telling you yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Just because denting blows late mm -hmm. game is really, really strong, especially with um, the way attack speed runes are so efficient now. Yeah. And that with Feral Flare, it's actually really strong. You just get more fists in there, and you get more damage off it with it. <laughs> um, so actually, okay, so we are, by the way, very close to champ select. Looks like the players are ready. So very soon, going to get ourselves some games. Um, so yeah, it's interesting then. You've got now more lanes where you can't ban it out. I think top lane's been stretching out a little bit more as well. Jax, Aurelia, Rise have been more and more common. We're not playing the same four tanky bruiser guys. I think Mundo's on his way back. We did see it in the last game, but also mm -hmm. with Summoner Heal removing um, healing debuffs, like that can even give you more room. And, and it's starting to, to stretch again. That brings up a really interesting point. I feel like Soraka is a must ban at this point if you know that the other team plays him at all. Soraka is so strong right now with the new summoner heal removing Ignite. Mm -hmm. Before, Soraka mid would run barrier and it was a similar thing. Like, oh, she's kind of hard to kill when you have barrier. Now, with heal, she removes Ignite and she gets a speed buff. Yeah. So it's really, really difficult to kill, uh, to kill her. She's amazingly strong early. She's just so annoying in team fights. I feel like that is uh, champion. If you know the other team plays it, mm -hmm. then you should not let them get it. Yeah, and then it becomes this interesting situation where because you know healers are more prevalent and you know that summoner heal as well just is going to remove that debuff, I want to see how much more we see executioners calling a Morella Namicon because I feel like you're going to see healing comps more often. Mm -hmm. And if you have executioners, like, okay, he removes the debuff and you hit him again and it's back on. It's like, well, unless you healed in that quarter second, you're okay. And I wonder how much more of the itemization actually shows up here. I know Merlin Omicon is standard against AD mid, so like you see it anyway, but I feel like there's room for the itemization to come through when you have a healer team and saying, well, we're going to remove that option. Yeah. Executor's, executioner's Calling has always been a weird item. Yeah. Kind of a money dump there. It's slightly inefficient. Yeah, but not anywhere really to go with the item. Yeah. And that is definitely a, a concern. And potentially you could say, well, what if you... Like, can you, can you like get away with putting it on like a jungle Nocturne or a jungle Vi where it's like that's your second offensive item like you ditch Brutalizer mm -hmm. and I know you lose damage for it like that's obviously true and maybe it's not even for AD carries because AD carries need all that multiplication but if you're like well I'm just going to do mostly AD ratios anyway like I feel like you can fit it in there's some champions where it's like that's my second offense item it will end up doing more damage to a Mundo than like a Bloodthirster would have just by reducing healing and if you consider it that way I think that that makes sense in the situation. Like, your total damage up actually goes up if they don't heal. I say, don't put that burden on the jungler. Put that oh, sorry. on top lane, because <laughs> make them build garbage. <laughs> Junglers are carries now, freak. Oh, uh, sorry. We don't have right. time to mess around with whatever little executor's <laughs> calling garbage you want. There's two supports now. It's the guy who's in the bottom lane and the guy in the top lane. Yeah. And the AD carry brings summoner heal to his support, too. It's yeah, there just, we go. It, and, <laughs> of course, mid lane Oriana, mid lane Lulu. Let's make the game about the jungler. Yeah, I think that's the way that Kobe would like to play League of Legends here. Feral Flare, grab all the items, no big deal. At Trinity Force, do more damage, no biggie. Um, yeah, okay, so then talk about the other big change of 4.5 with the rune changes. And I've been profiling mm. the players like mad. Uh, I went upstairs, every single game, profiled all 10 players, looked all the runes down. It's interesting because, so you mentioned this slightly, there's been rune efficiency changes. Yeah. Um, the big ones Attack being, speed, baby. Attack <laughs> speed quints are amazing now. Attack speed quints are good on pretty much any champion that likes to auto-attack. And it's interesting because there's, there's, there's two big sets of changes. So one is the efficiency change, attack speed quints being the very big one there. The other one being, I guess, health seals went up. Um, the second one is um, the big set of seal changes. So the, with the efficiency I want to bring up is that actually a couple players actually are still getting the runes wrong. Um, if you're going to run like attack speed and AD, if those are like the two stats you want, yeah. the best way to do that is attack damage marks 
attack speed quintessences. That used to be the other way around at 4.4. You'd run AS marks, AD coins. Yeah. That's the other way now. If you're running Elise, uh, this still the common jungle Elise rune pages have attack speed and hybrid pen. Attack speed quints, hybrid pen marks, that's the way to do it. Yeah. For those guys out there, just with the numbers. Yeah, so literally what he's saying right now is there is a way to do your runes wrong. This yeah. is not subjective. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, They're literally just the, better. The guys, in the, yeah, the guys in the last game, like you can get the exact same stats, just more of them. Yes. If you do attack speed as quints and then attack damage on mm -hmm. your marks. Okay, so by the way, uh, <laughs> we didn't lie about the computer replacement. That's fine now. Unfortunately, we uh, one of the players has headset problems. So um, they are, by the way, I got, an I got another one right here. We yeah. got them covered. <laughs> well, the problem is they're in a studio in Cologne. Uh, that would take ah! some time. I feel like that mm -hmm. flight would take longer than our QA to, to fix it. Is this going to help? The Apple would not help. I don't believe that fixes headphones. That's all I got up here. You got a water bottle. I mean, if that helps. I guess we can just cheer for them or pray. Good luck. Does that work? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it works. I, I, you know what? It's, it's fine. I trust I trust the, the wonderful Germans over there making things work out. We will get ourselves underway before too long. I mean, these teams did play there yesterday. Um, for those wondering, by the way, like, what's up with Challenger, by the way, it's always actually broadcast in uh, North America. Uh, it's always in Don't LA. give away secrets. We're Sorry. going into Challenger. <laughs> Giving away secrets. Just kidding. <laughs> Never mind. I didn't say anything. Champs has begun. Here we go. Ninjas in pajamas in blue. Cloud9 Eclipse in red. Um, we're going to see what happens with these guys. The band's, of course, going to be starting up here. And the other part of the uh, the runes thing was that there's a lot of options for seals now. We can talk about them to get ourselves into the game. Needly banned away from Febivan. He's been playing a lot of Siege right there. Nuke Duck. He's a big LeBlanc player. I've seen it banned against him yeah. like seven times in a row now. LeBlanc, Zed, Lulu. These are all very probable picks for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lulu's gone. Unlikely or to pick Lulu here. high probability of banning those champions yes. because the players as well can do the same research that we do. Arguably better. They probably played against them in solo queue. Probably. It'd be hard for us to play against them when we're in NA. But it's okay. These guys know what's up. NIP, their second band comes through. That is actually Zed. That would have been a big assassin player, so no surprise on that one. Yeah, interesting contested pick right there. I am... I was talking a lot about Soraka. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't feel like either of these guys has put in a lot of time on her. Mm -hmm. Um... But Cloud9 did use her once. Yeah. So maybe they are that confident that they will use her again. They brought and I out think game three. that it would be a strong pick against this NIP team if they're going to go with that early game strategy and they want to shove all their lanes, mm -hmm. they want to bring a, a Lee Sin or a Kha'Zix from the jungle, then that would be a great mid laner to work around. And by the way, like the, this Cloud9 team, they don't practice that much, or they don't practice at all actually yeah. against the North American Cloud9 team, but they do have the same analysts. Now he doesn't give them the exact same strategies to work with because they're different teams and have different styles. Sure. But similar ideas are going to be brought up in the yeah. discussions with that analyst. So same thing with this rocket might happen. Yeah, and you've got a team who's winning the North American LCS right now, right? And it's they're doing something place. right. They're clearly doing something right, right? Number one team twice in a row so far. Figure it's going to be some useful information to listen to. The band does come through on the Lee Sin, so Ko's not going to get that champion here. Final band from C9E is the LeBlanc away, and first pick, Kha'Zix right. comes in, so and I can yeah, deny that. I like that, because I, I kept on mentioning those two. I like this stealing it away, um, only having to use one ban on jungle and being able to take Kha'Zix away. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty good opener here from NIP, I have to say. So C9E, we think about, are they going to be aggressive? Elise is still available, of course, with Kha'Zix grab. There's no rush in grabbing a jungler here. Um, it's not really the Zoro Zero play style. Mm -hmm. He's been really actually bruiser heavy so far in this season. Nuke Tuck, I suppose, is a player who could play Kha'Zix. He's generally had a very wide champion pool. Or I guess deep is the word we use, but it was a big, uh -huh. big Fizz player back in Season 3. Like, Either way, you get more volume. Yeah, no matter what, the volume's increased. That's all we care about is the volume of champions. Shogath makes your champion pool the largest. Simply just is the biggest impact with individual champion. Teemo doesn't increase their champ pool very much, but it's going to be Shivana for Odwamna, also the uh, Liliana for the early dive, but NIP already have their pick. Yeah, lightning fast lock-ins going according to plan here. Uh, Thresh is always a very high priority, so not really a surprise. And Freeze, uh, very, very happy to be on Lucian. We saw the outplay already, the replay of it. Yeah. They get ganked, they get first blood. That should never happen. That's mm -hmm. definitely a mistake by the other team, as well as just being played so well of course. by this bottom lane. So having the bottom lane on this confident combo here, mm -hmm. it, I think is uh, is not looking that great for Cloud9. 
So we'll see if C9E can make something happen then for themselves. The hover on Sivir. Hmm. Sivirlution's a fairly tough matchup. It is winnable. You can spell shield the Q, but it's a bit difficult. Uh, but that already gets locked in, so we got a Sivir lane. So they were talking about NIP likes extending laning phase. Not yeah. a lot of people in Europe do the 2 vs 1 switch. Sivir Leona could do a 2 vs 1 switch. They've actually locked in Rise and Shivana. So probably the mid lane rise and then Shivana side lane. Shivana can jungle pretty well. A two versus one switch would not be bad for Cloud9 if they want to try and throw NIP off. Yeah. Maybe since there's not that much of this two versus one um, he was talking about over in Europe, then they want, want to throw them off that way. Well, look at the difference, though, for NIP. They suddenly got a very early game focused team because you've got Twisted Fate running around. Oh, Rumble. Make yeah, and Rumble, right? Uh -huh. Rumble spikes like 9 to 13 in levels. Like it, He's not the crazy endgame carry like Rise is. you got Twisted Fate, who's also only got two big damage skills. Was changed a bit in 4.5. Easier to lock in a gold card than use it a bit later on. But you've got a team that's like trying to make plays early. Yeah, and I also really like this last pick, Twisted Fate. He's good defense if there is an early lane swap. Mid laners with wave clear are very important in this day and age. Twisted Fate has that pre-6. Plus, then, post-6, he can get around the map very quickly since it's all about rotations towards the mid-game. It's a great champion to have in your pool. I do like this setup here from NIP. It looks like they're trying to get the first uh, jump and catch Cloud9 off guard. Yeah, well, C9E, up. speaking of off guard, yeah. switch the whole thing around. Jungle Shivana, actually, the rise of the top laner. Ari comes in for the matchup. Ari has assassination potential on yeah. Twisted Fate. Oh, yeah. So that right there is kind of a reaction uh, to Twisted Fate. She can easily kill him post six as if Nuke Duck is not careful, if he's not employing his Juke Duck skills. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's going to be fun, though. Like, we've kind of all but forgotten about Jungle Shivana. It always is in the back of my mind anytime it gets picked up. I'm mm -hmm. like, I wonder if it'll go jungle there. But so you've got an interesting Rise matchup there. Rise versus Rumble. Like, it's weird because basically C9E managed to get a double counter pick mm -hmm. this way. Because they locked in Ari last, of course, knowing it's against TF. They picked up the Rise, making it look like it was going to be a mid laner, actually. Unless, unless NIP knew, like, the likeliness of Jungle Shivana. And so basically C9E got to say, okay, well, they get to determine their lanes completely at that point. And say, yeah, let's send Rise up. Let's send Shivana on Jungle. Let's yeah. send Ari here. And even though they did not get Elisa or Kha'Zix, mm -hmm. they did not give up the plan of jungle invades. Shivana can build a uh, Feral Flare. She's yeah. very strong with it. She doesn't need mana, so she doesn't even sacrifice anything by not going Spirit Stone. She al already likes to farm very hard. Mm -hmm. She's a quick clearing jungler, and she likes to counter jungle very hard. So they can still do the same thing. If they can get some nice uh, vision in early, then Shivana can actually do some good... Uh, work in the jungle. Well, let's see. It's going to be a whole bunch However, of her fun. ganks uh, yeah. are definitely going to be great. lackluster. Ganks aren't great. So it's probably going to be Ko looking to actually just fight the other jungler mm -hmm. because um, then at least the other team won't get strong ganks either. Okay, so Shivana versus Kha'Zix, the jungle matchup. There's a TP for Odwam, C9E's top lane rise. But Zoro Zero is running Ignite for lane dominance. So a lot of differences between these guys. Um, both supports running Ignite, both AD carries running Summon or Heal. Mm -hmm. Both mid laners running Ignite as well. I feel like I want to recount all of them just because things are going to change a whole bunch. B4.5. Yeah. The double Targons for shoving here. Uh, Targons with a Thresh mm -hmm. is not a super common thing, but Voidal actually does it as well. So yeah. uh, the, both of these guys actually preferring the extra health there and going to have to rely on their spells and auto attacks to actually land the last hit. They will not be benefiting from the execute. Yeah. Also, Rise starting Mana Crystal. Very offensive start here for him. Mm -hmm. Looking for those high impact long range cues to just harass Zoro Zero down. Yeah. And as opposed to going with boots for the move speed. Yeah. More, much more defensive start. Absolutely. Well, we'll see if he can sit up here against Rumble very nicely. Rumble starting with Thorn Shield. Um, is worth pointing out, Mithy almost always runs attack damage marks on Thresh. He's got 57 AD, which I'm uh -huh. pretty sure is attack damage marks. Um, Thresh has pretty low base AD. Oops. Um, Step outside the bush. What? Ward they comes get down, it. gets killed. 30 gold to C9E. So that ward going away from Mithy. It's 75 gold down the drain. Um, but worth pointing out that, you know, Targon's does not execute if you're Thresh. Thresh is a yeah. quote-unquote ranged champion. I, so. I did go over that while you were looking at oh, you uh, did? the runes. Okay. Mithy, but well, then, yeah, I looked up the runes because we were talking about it. But yeah, the runes will help him. He still gets to do more damage there. There you go. All right.
We've solved the counter jungling starting already, as we mentioned from Shivana. That invade made uh, possible by the ward kill that they made in that uh, little bush in the river very early on. It did mean, however, Sivir and Leona didn't get to have a very, very quick start to the lane, so they didn't get to really shove early. Yes, we're gonna see actually a couple of minions miss right here. Good play. Yarnin gonna take a lot of damage actually. Already burned his potion as well and the regen from the yeah. first two stacks of Targon's Brace used. They are definitely gonna have an uphill battle here since they did not get to shove early and they are short range, very short lane uh, for this Cloud9 Eclipse. They're gonna have to try and CS under turret now. Yeah. See how many they can secure. Pretty you know, big upper hand here for the NIP bot. Absolutely is. Holberto is going to be able to grab the C9E red buffs. These guys are trading two buffs for two. Ko, she already waiting around to counter gank up here. Yarnin still level one though. Q comes out bit of damage, but so his AD carry is at 200 HP. It's very very risky to try and force a gank like this. If Yarnin goes in for any extra damage, Ooh, the E from Voidal misses. No gank for yeah, Ko. Yeah, it's so dangerous. Like there. This is a very real possibility of NIP getting first blood again wow. while the other team ganks them. This is that was incredibly. This nice is getting out of control very quickly. Yeah, Voidal forced a flash. Now Summoner Heal is still available for Yernin. And you can see he's trying to wave through a bit. That Q nearly hit right there. Honestly, NIP are like inches away from taking kills. Yernin does not have spell shield as well. So if you land a hook, that guy is going to have to burn some summoners to get out. Yeah. Even dangerous for them to uh, CS under turret, as you can see. NIP threatening to harass them under. Move up top, though. Yeah, look how far back Odomino's forced to be right there. He's going to miss multiple waves now under the turret. The early pushing by Zero Zero is working out. Shivana should be able to cut off Nuke Duck here. Wow. Think he might have read. seen him. Think he might have seen him get in that bush. Yeah, there weren't any wards. He would have had to see it somehow. Because he went all the way down. I was like, wait a second, and turned back. Yeah. Like That's pretty much the only way you get ganked by Shivana this early, <laughs> is if you walk into her. It's true. He, he does have flash, but uh, as, if you don't walk into her, you should be fine. Just gold card to the face, walk out. Not a big problem. Ko is going to try to keep the invasion going, though, stealing away some of the uh, double golems down on the bottom side. Ko does have 16 to the 11 minions of Holberto, so uh, as far as that's concerned, it's going well. See, so, you know, then you actually do have a gold lead overall. Their mid lane's winning by 11 minions. That stun comes in. Look at Ko from the back as well. Mithy's got to be careful here. More red buff, though. He's going to flash away. Pulls the lantern in. Freeze going to be pretty safe. Q comes out. Summoner heal was used to keep the team alive. Ko in a really bad oh, spot. Man. And down he goes. Well played, Mithy. Again, NIP bot lane get ganked. They get first blood. Shivana's red buff had already run out. Their AD carry could not apply a lot of pressure because Yarnin is very low. Even though he has summoner heal, the other team have their summoner heal as well, and they used it. Mm -hmm. Wow, here we go. So this is a Shivana gank for you. No red buff, uh, adds a bit of damage. But with so much uh, displacement there, they're able to use the flash and the heal. Yeah. Uh, heal giving a speed buff now, it's just such a strong summoner. Oh, and Odama has down to the top lane. No hope up there. These pre-6 yeah. TF that's, ganks. That's this is the second already. time he roamed up there. Awesome play by Nuketuck. He's giving up minions for it, but honestly, the fact that he's now snowballed that top lane into a good spot, Odama does have his summoner teleport back up, plus a tier. But still, I mean, that is a great start. NIP, and I've always wondered if this was in their back pocket, can NIP, can NIP <laughs> play hyper-aggressive early on? Because they're such good players, they, I mean, they're incredible. They, they, three of the four, uh, five members here went to Worlds. Yeah. As Lemon Dogs. Like, these guys have a wealth of experience, and they're playing an early game aggressive team more here. The early roaming from pre-ult TF, and it's paying off. People can change, Freak. I've always been told, you know, over and over, whenever we go over to Europe to cast some games and we get intel on the guys, like Nuke Duck is a laner who likes to control his mid lane, and he doesn't like to uh, roam around much like that. But now, he is even before he's level six on TF, so exerting his will all over the map. Mm -hmm. Definitely has multiple play styles. Maybe that's just a very old, uh, yeah, thing about him staying in mid lane, but regardless, he's coming out roaming around quite often here, yeah, early, and it's only going to get worse. He's almost level six here. There, he does have it now. The bottom lane has to worry even more. Mm -hmm. Siver Leona with Targons, whenever they shove up, they have to be very careful. Yeah, absolutely. If Siver's overextended, like you can spell shield one CC, but then you're pretty screwed. 
One thing I want to point out with this match uh, overall, though, is so even though both these teams have been have qualified for uh, the summer promotion tournament, we actually know all three teams that are going. Right now, I think these teams are playing for fear because you don't want to get first pick. You don't want to play maybe Copenhagen Wolves, whichever team takes six in the playoffs. Like the scarier you look, the easier your opponent is for promotion. That's ultimately the goal for these guys to make it into the LCS. So the scarier you look, the later you get picked up in the promo tournament and the higher chance you play a team who's been having a lot of trouble like Millennium. Yeah, that's what I was saying about um, uh, LMQ in the North American Challenger scene. It's all about your reputation in Challenger. Reputation does mean a lot. Now, I really would like NIP to continue to pressure Ryze early. Ryze is very easy to take advantage of early. He has no summoner spells. He started tier. He's very, very squishy at this point. Ryze takes a while to scale up. He'll be very, very difficult to deal with early. So with champions like that, you want to take advantage of the windows that you have with them. And uh, I think TF being six would be a great, great uh, opportunity for Nuke Duck definitely to continue the pressure up there. Or maybe Zero Zero could just do it himself. Well, it's going to be a bit of damage coming in. A little bit more comes through, but doesn't quite have enough. The equalizer, unfortunately, I don't think he even hit Odwamna once right there. Would have been the solo kill for Zoro Zero, though, but slight miss on the aim there. Because I haven't seen Rumble Top in a while, but he's fun to see. Yeah, the uh, new skin probably upped his play rate a little bit. He didn't pick it, though. Yeah, sad. Very sad. Maybe it's not uh, available. I know uh, Void Fizz was actually played yesterday, so I think he just opted into being lame. It is available on the Tournament Realm, so Zoro Zero just uh, is a hater. It's the official word here <laughs> in the Challenger Series. Well, uh, players like, uh, you know, Faker says that he doesn't use skins. Yep. He so, is also uh, a hater. <laughs> He's the number one hater in the world. I yes, guess. he is. He's number one. Oh! He's the hater. We will not see a fight here. Ku already, though, up one level on Kha'Zix. The hard farming here for Shivana, mm -hmm. even though he died at bottom, is going that Riggles build, and he's going to be trying to get as many large minions as possible because the late game scaling power of that Feral Flare is intense. Shivana, yeah. he might not even have to build a Blade of the Ruin King. He might just be full tank after Riggles. Mm -hmm. The only problem, he's going to need some slow from somewhere. So if he gets a Randuin's, and he should be able to stick on his target and only have to have one offensive Ooh, item. The Vivian, the battle with Nuke Duck. One more shot. Is the Ignite going to be enough? No, it's not. He's got forced to flash away from the turret, though. Vivian not quite getting enough damage. Dangerous right there, though, with uh, Alberto coming up on Kha'Zix. He didn't really have an option of going any deeper. Tough luck for Vivian. I'm going to just watch the top lane for a bit, though. Despite the uh, couple of early ganks overall, and Odomna getting pushed around a fair bit, honestly, is still keeping up in minions with Zoro Zero in the top lane. This game, only 900 gold apart, right? Dexter talked about outplaying NIP in their own game. Mm -hmm. C9E just saying, we're going to scale, we're going to scale. They've only given up two kills, and the gold's still close. Yeah, I think that there's still a pretty big window for NIP to uh, attack that rise, but we have not seen an ult from Nuke Duck yet. He made more ganks pre-6 than he has since he's gotten his ult. That's true, actually, yeah. It's been probably, what, six, uh, four minutes or so since actually he hit that level six right there, Ko. Looking down towards the bottom. Nice hook on Avoidal. Gonna get slowed down. Puts the ulti down right onto Freeze, though. Bit of damage comes through. Ko waiting in the wind. dive. Uh, summoner heal is up, though. It's gonna be a bit of risk for C9. Nice Q lands, though, from Yernin. Yeah, so they call off the dive. Probably a wise call right there. Yernin did pop his ulti for it, though. And as you can see, Shivana is just making her home in this jungle side, doing a lot of counter jungling. Is trying to keep that Kha'Zix in check early, and he's done a good job. Kha'Zix has not had high impact ganks yet. Let's see what else they can find on this one. Zero Zero happy to remove these minions one more time before getting pushed back. The wave clear coming in for Odwamna. Pop in his ultimate. It's a fairly low cooldown when you rise. It's actually not a bad thing just to spam your ulti, just to get the lane into control. Yeah, especially if you are using your spells to CS. It will further lower the cooldown. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do cast, getting a nice flash out there. These, It's not a lot of effort that Ko is having to put into these top lane ganks. All he yeah. had to do was walk by, and he was awarded a flash. So that was a very, very efficient gank there. Especially since he's Shivana and not a lot of threat. Yeah, so that one's not going to work right there. Mithy looking for random juke patterns for Yernin, but generally speaking, those hooks are not landing on the C9E AD carry. 
the dual lane, 13 minions in the lead, though. I do have to commend uh, Freeze and Mithy for doing a very good job in this lane. Whoa, Ryze wow. is dead. So he was blinking there. Um, yep. Solo kill. So the ulti lands. Zero. No flash burn either. Yeah, and so much damage. It's. I mean, there's a lot of slow from Rumble, but not hard CC, so... I probably caught him off guard up there. Let's take a look. He just gets a good equalizer this time. Able to squish him against the wall there. Yeah. I don't know. Probably should have ran downhill uh, in that yeah. case. You never want to run over a full equalizer like that. Yeah, he managed to clip the side of it as he's walking through instead of like flashing the wall or flashing past it. So, of course, well played. That's Zoro Zero's now 2-0 uh, in this lane matchup overall. I mean, making the kills happen. Very impressive stuff by this guy. So. NIP just winning the lanes a little bit. Yeah, NIP, they got their extended laning phase here. It's already 13 minutes. No towers have gone down. They have a healthy lead. They're feeling pretty good about this game. Um, Cloud9, though, they have a lot of late game scaling. Sivir with Shivana is always a great combo, even if it is coming from the jungle. She'll be a little bit less tanky, but not that much. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always really good with Ryze, too, who scales up late game and also benefits greatly from move speed. It's going to be a fun one to watch then. How good is the C9E late game team fight? Can Oduamna rejoin his team into fights and all that fun stuff? We have seen Ryze be very effective in the semifinals, actually. C9E fell afoul of that champion. Uh oh. Okay, burnout. Yeah. Not going to oh. take it away. Charms it. There we go. Not many people take the uh, blade, uh, whatchamacallit, mastery. Yeah. Well, it won't anymore. steal it anyway. It's oh yeah, it hits a health. percentage. It hits really weak. Yeah, as the as the monster gets lower, should, it should be impossible to steal. Um, but yeah, the weird thing is like just as a random aside on that mastery, if you're a slow clearing jungler like someone like Nautilus who doesn't kill the big camps very fast, you actually get a substantial amount of clear speed out of that mastery because the big guy's gonna be at high health for a while. If you're like Shivana, I can see not wanting to pick it up because you'll kill things fast anyway. I think it's, it helps slow junglers. Yeah, doesn't help him enough though. TF there, long range ulti back to lane. So he was walking up towards Rise, mm -hmm. but there was no slow landed onto Rise. Yeah. So that's why he popped the ulti. Yes, yeah, so it was a little premature, um, but he was looking to go top. He wasn't just using that to get back to mid lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he cares that much about the landing phase. You know what? I'll ult to make my trip back quicker. Minions. Yes, please. Zoro Zero does have his ulti He'll back up. Guess he does like to control his lane. Yep. Do all my ganking before I get level 6. To be fair, it watches for counter ganks too. You'd be like, oh, Shivana's bottom. All right, I'm safe. Yeah, and also we'd give them vision around Dragon. There's uh, 15 minutes here. Haven't seen it taken down yet. Not a lot of control around that area of the map either. You can see NIP very defensive here. They even just shove one ward over the back of the Dragon Pit. They're not looking to uh, set up a lot around it. They just want to make sure that C9 weren't taking it. Huh. Well, it's going to be their choice for now. Febivan looks for the worm down, but sees Hilberto. Realize he's spotted pieces out of that one. Hilberto, word over the wall. That one's going to get killed, but Febivan, he's actually in a bit of a tough spot. He's going to get locked down. Forced to ulti. The uh, damage coming through Ignite as uh, well nearly takes on Hilberto. Yeah, I don't know. Febivan has been playing very careful. Yeah. Uh, he does not overextend four trades, it looks like. The second time he's gotten someone extremely low and someone else on NIP shows up to save that person and Fabibin completely backs off, does yeah. not even tr want to try and go for it, even with summoners up. Uh, but it's a safe way to play. They're going to try and take advantage of the jungler being chunked down and just take the easy objective. Yeah. I like it. Low risk. Low risk prey here from uh, Cloud9. Yes. Uh, it looks like they are trying to use this uh, late game NIP scaling against them. Yeah. And Ko just finished Feral Flare. That was actually his first camp since Feral Flare was the dragon. It was his first soul consumed. Pretty good. Yeah. 16 it's minutes is a very decent Feral Flare. Mm -hmm. uh, fastest one I've had was uh, 15 minutes, about 15 minutes even. Oh, nice. And that's if you're doing really well. Yeah. But 16 is also very strong. I got a five minute Riggles once. I got a triple kill off teleport bottom lane. It was great. I backed and got a Riggles. I don't know if I got it by like 15 minutes before, but yeah, plenty fast. Alberto does have Lizard Elder. For what it's worth, guys, later on in this game, I'll be tracking um, 
conservation versus Riggle's money later on in this game. 0-0 though, Ooh. to be in a fight against Otwamna and Ko. It, the teleport comes out for TF. Ko has to ulti over the wall, but still taking damage. Forced to flash as well, Herberto on the wings. Nuke Duck, will he flash the slow onto two? The Q is gonna land on a one. Ko still trying to run away. Looks like he'll be safe, but the counter gag works. Now in the bottom lane, a fight erupts. Sivir ulti pop, two box balls, maybe a third soon. A lot of damage. Febivin gets the kill back on a 0-0, but now in the bottom lane, Freeze trying to run away. Ulti comes in. Voidal gonna be able to dodge most of the culling here and keep himself alive. All right, we top and we bottom. Kills everywhere, one man down for each team. Both top laners dead. Nobody bites the dust down bottom, but a lot of summoners as well as the ulti is blown. Yeah, Looks three like summoners and four Cloud9 control. retained control of the lane here after the exchange. Wow. All right, so up top, um, they started, whoa. That was the clean. That was live, and, no, that was replay. Yeah. This was live. The PIP, confusing. Oh, yeah. That, All right, that was so they get, a, they get a, that was the answer kill onto Rumble. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, despite the TF uh, ulti, I got to say, good good roam made by Febivin. Yeah, so the thing that was unfortunate for Cloud9, you know, Ryze flashed out of that two versus two exchange and then hung around because he was worried for Shivana, tried to land another snare and ended up going down himself because he was trying to save his uh, partner there. Oh, rough. Wow. Oh, what you're saying about the jungle items, though. Generally, uh, Conservation will award you more money than the Riggles passive or the Feral Flare passive, unless you're just permanently farming your jungle, which is a fairly poor jungle style to play. Okay. Um, so generally, the Conservation awards you a little bit more gold, but you also have to take into account the ward that you get to drop. You want to have to kill again by zero zero. That's true, yeah. You get... A third of a sight stone, basically. Voidal in a bit of a damage. Wow, the flash from Mythi keeps himself alive. Eclipse is still on, though. Voidal not taking much damage. Mythi will disengage. Small, small window for him to flash out there. Gets the safety. Bottom lane turret down, though. That should afford them some control for the next dragon. It's interesting, actually, I want to point out. Voidal rushed face the mount with no other items. He that is loved, literally his first item. He loves that item. Like yeah, he, he does. gets it on Thresh. He gets it like he's a very he big on fan. Annie. Yeah, he's a exactly. He's a very big fan of Face of the Mountain, and it's uh it's going to help them out because they do need a little bit of extra tankiness to shore up with Rise and Shivana since it's a jungle Shivana. Mm -hmm. I do like that pickup for him. Getting it really early uh, affords them a mid game tank that they don't really have otherwise. And Cloud9, with their late game scaling team, have actually gotten ahead in gold despite being down kills. Yeah, and that's and even despite the TF passive too. Now we talk, okay, so this is a shifter move right here. Oh, really the juke, Nuke Duck taking a bunch of pain, dodges the second Q, ulti comes in, Fabivin does not have the damage, Nuke Duck with the escape. That, that was, was a nice. really strong escape. If the charm had landed 100% dead, but it did not, and Forbidden does not get his kill. Quick thinking there by Nuke Duck, getting off the fast stun into TF ulti. Yeah. W almost came back up. You saw him dash forward and couldn't quite put the damage through there. Face the Mountain, of course, available. Looks like Sightstone already picked up as well, plus Boots. So uh, Voidal basically equalized the item lead right here. Going to see what Mithy goes for with the items. He's starting part of a chalice, but he's also getting a ruby crystal. We'll see where that ends up moving. Mm, yeah, interesting item pickup here for TF as well with the changes to Lich Bane. Not trying to get that early at all. Already going to needlessly large rod, just looking for more burst power with his spells. Yeah, we'll see where the transition keeps moving him to. Voidal and Yarn are going to make their way towards the mid lane. They walk through a ward, though. Nothing going to be... Too crazy in this one. Ko making his way top lane as well. A bit of a fight looks like he's going to start here. Two on two oh. in the rush he goes. Equalizer misses completely. And Odromna looking for damage now here. Hilberto forced ult trying to run away down very, very low. Zoro Zero now very much alone on this one. He's going to take down Ko before he falls. Odromna does not have flash. Cannot catch Hilberto one for one. Man, Equalizer missing like that in a two versus two mm -hmm. is terrible for your team. You can see how close the fight was even without Equalizer damage. Would have yeah. changed everything here. But now the mid lane push, and Mithy does not have flash this time. Stun comes in, DFG. Fabivin picks up one kill. Dwamna gets the root on a nuke duck. That's going to be a whole bunch of pain as well. Yerna gets the kill. C9E now with four kills in the map, two for zero. In that and they're fight. looking to press it here. Uh, calling for a shove on mid. Continued 
power play here. They do not have a minion line, though, so they're going to have to wait around. Nobody's got enough armor to tank a turret this early in the game. They wouldn't even get a lot of damage down on it. Great rotation over to Dragon, though. They should have the timer. Three more seconds on it. Good Solar Flare able to catch out Mithy. As we said, he didn't have Flash this time, so there is no hope. And they do get two. Gromne coming in with a teleport from the backside there. That deep ward, not only does it allow for mid lane picks, but also it allowed for that uh, deep teleport by Rise. Yeah. So awarding them uh, a good flank opportunity and fortunate timing for Dragon coming up right then. Yeah. See that here and really good control to Dragon for themselves. Uh, just as a quick update on the jungle items. During that replay, I checked they're both at about 250. So they're holding equal so far. See if it transitions out anywhere else in the future in this one, but see what happens. Vivian actually has been staying top lane for a bit in this one, actually. he's Second time he's been holding this lane, but looks like 0, zero plus Holberto. Actually, 0, zero plus uh, Mithy might be enough to just control this turret right now. Vivian forced back, turret does go down. NFP find their first of the game. Yeah, you gotta respect this uh, zero, 0 rumble right now, going a lot of damage and penetration here. If he does land a good uh, ulti, then it will be very hard to deal with. They really need his next equalizer uh, to be a, uh, the turning of the tides in the team fight here. I feel like it's slipping away from NIP. Yeah. And they need to make some sort of move either with the global teleport from TF or with a strong equalizer to make their comeback now because this late game from C9, they, it looks like their rotations are very strong and they're the ones who have Sivir and they have the teleport. Yeah. So the only thing they have to deal with is this global teleport from TF, which he has not been using very often. Yeah, he used it once for a gank top that got turned around as a one for one, once to escape away from Ari. Mm -hmm. The rumble you mentioned before is also available. Looks like C9E have the way in on the red buff, but Alberto doesn't want to give this one away. We'll see if the red buff is... There's no Shivana here, so there's not going to be a smite away. Um, at best, Cloud9 can, could deny it from maybe freeze and force Roberto to take it, but that's not a very big deal. Junglers love having that red buff. Yeah. It is a little bit more effective on melees than it is on range anyway. Ooh, flash by Nuketuck gets him away. The slow lands from the ult. He pops the ult himself, oh. but goes down too quickly for Bivin. Gets the kill credit on this one. Killing They're going to cut off Rumble too. Zero Zero's in trouble. Uh, his health bar might get removed to zero. No. Oh. What? He turned around. Okay. I guess he didn't think anyone was coming to stop him. He got in some reinforcements here. Kazakhs as well as Thresh coming up to back him up. Blue should probably go over to Cloud9 as long as they finish that top turret in time. They can easily collapse here. They're also getting a lot of good ward coverage here down on NIP's jungle side. There's no blue wards on Cloud9's side of the map. Pretty much all of the fighting going to be taking place over on this NIP jungle. And Cloud9... Oh, but if there's going to be enough to keep the uh, turret in completely full health right there. And if you do stop that one, Code makes his way back around. Did rush a Randwin's Omen. He actually bought a cloth armor and sold it at some point randomly. He had that very early on in the game, but got rid of it. Wanted Merc Treads anyway. So Randwin's Omen now done. Only one offensive item. You did identify that one. Oh, yeah. Randwin's Omen, go. as I was saying, he needs a slow from somewhere. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be building that blade since he started Wriggles. Big pickup right there. Yeah. Going to allow him not only to chase Lucian, but TF as well. This TF, he just uses Flash and his ulti. So he's a very immobile, squishy champion. If anybody gets on him, he's going to be in trouble. He does not have his um, Zanyas. That's what I thought the Needlessly Large would go into, but he's actually gotten Death Cap. Yeah. So he's playing really, really offensive here. It's a bit of a gambit from Nuke Duck here. But we'll see if it pays off. Does it give him more wave clear? Yeah, it'll keep him ahead of the curve as far as one-shotting casters with his Q. It's always a sort of a battle with TF. Mm -hmm. Is because casters gain two MR every couple of minutes as well as some health. Uh, you kind of have this race of like, can I get enough ability power and magic pen? And with him going Merc Treads, he's got to keep his AP up. Otherwise, he'd be in danger of not getting it. Um, but yeah, last time I really saw Nuke Duck TF, it was a while ago, but he was his dedicated split pusher. He would always be able to put pressure on turrets. He was always able to kill off minion waves. And honestly, he's so good at stopping the pushes there. You've got Lucian, Twisted Fate, and Rumble all ready to clear out minions. Like, C9E actually sieging? It's going to be hard. Yeah, they're definitely going to be looking for the team fights. And it looks like NIP have decided, we do not want to take 
any of those. Even though we have Rumble, we're going to have our TF build more for the wave clear and not for the team fight with Azanias. They're going to try and uh, spread out the map here. Let's see if they can find it. Dragon is up in a minute 15. C9E has already been controlling the objectives right there. They did not steal the rabbit, but they did steal the blue. Rise, of course, continuing to scale. Has Seraph's Embrace completely done. Hook comes out, does not Ooh. land. Nor do the Void Spikes. NIP do have some defensive pink wards, though, keeping their jungle fairly safe. All right. Well, five men middle here. If the, if the team fight does break out towards the mid, it's going to be a lot of pressure on Zoro Zero to land his ulti. His ulti will do a tremendous amount in this team fight because he as well has gotten extremely offensive uh, with his build. He's got a death cap as well. Going to need a good one for them to land. However, Cloud9 have so much mobility. They can easily reposition. Sivir ulti. Ryze even has his own move speed that he'll be able to make use of. And Ari is extremely hard to lock down. I really like Cloud9's chance in this team fight. They're looking to flank from the side. Well, they look maybe in for this one. Ko a bit far away. 10 seconds till Dragon. They're at least controlling the rotations on it. TF ult pop. Ah, uh, there it is. Draw them over to the Dragon pit. Okay, five versus five. Poke coming out from Holberto. NIP. Maybe they push mid lane for this, but right now, C and E have started up on the Dragon. Ninjas in pajamas waiting far enough away. Looks like they will not go for this whatsoever. Dragon going down rather quickly. And Ko will claim a victim there. Dragon actually goes over to Yernin. Scumbag Yernin stealing a Feral Flare stock with that one. Ulti comes in. It's going to be a dash away. Holberto, Nuke Duck, they're all in the mix. Nice knockback, but here comes the fight. Equalizer comes across the entire team. Nuke Duck goes down first. The back line still safe. Ko forced to run, but he's going to get traded down. Back by Mithy. One for one fight. Flashed by Yernin. Good damage comes through. Can he find much more? Holberto takes a crit to the back of the head. The Mithy off on the side as well. More flashes used. Oh, the hook doesn't land. And down he goes. Picks up the kill on a Mithy. Two for one, C9E. Yeah, and NIP were able to get one kill because it was a good equalizer that cut off the rest of the team while they focused down the Shivana. But as we said, this TF, extremely squishy, uh, very immobile, not able to get out alive. Getting the slow from the Solar Flare, they started off, they go right into the box and equalizer. So three members sitting on box plus equalizer. Everybody else kind of gets zoned out and Ko gets focused down, so they trade it one for one. But one team has Sivir, amazing at chasing down. And then Mithy trying to tag somebody on the backside. The Bibbin just turns around right in his face. Yeah, that. I feel like the hook did a land. Greedy. So you said the hook didn't land. It landed, oh. just not on the target did that was going to kill. Yeah. <laughs> not the one you just really want. <laughs> stuff right there. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, update on the jungle items 500 gold for uh, the Lizard Elder of Fulbert, about 450 for Ko's Shivana, but 22 Feral Flare stacks yeah. for Shivana so far. So uh, worth it. Definitely worth it. Couple uh, of like I said, well. it's, it's the late game option mm -hmm. for the jungle. And since the early game did not have a lot of action, that's the kind of jungler that you want in these long games. Cloud9 came into this game thinking they were going to play the long game. They were going to try and go with option number two. Yeah. Outscale, NIP, play them at their own game. And it has worked out beautifully for them. They used the rise, they used the silver pick, and they've also got the farming jungle. So it looks like Ko is not just an early game jungler here. Not just able to put out great ganks, great early game with Lee Sin. 134 CS Shivana. Gotta say, actually, pretty high minion score game overall. No no record setting paces, although 310 for Fabivan's pretty good. Three completed items there Death Cap, DFG, Void Staff. Not much mana regen, not much CDR, but if you can one shot people, who cares? It's gonna look pretty okay in Ari there. We'll see what his next item ends up being. I really like the item path for Ryze too. He's anytime he's against strong AP, it's actually good for him because he loves building Spirit Visage, cooldown reduction, and the increased health, um, the increased healing is so good on Ryze. He's very happy that it also doubles as the best sort of defense to build against a double AP comp. Yeah, he'll be happy. I wonder if anyone's going to go Abyssal here, because both these teams are running double AP comps. Mm -hmm. In fact, Shivana's going to probably do more magic than physical to champions anyway. Yeah, she definitely will. So, almost triple AP in a certain way. The AD carry is the only main source of physical damage for both lineups here. I guess Kha'Zix actually another big one. But you can see how fast the wave is cleared down. But Yarnan staying around. Low health jumped in from Freeze. Good damage. The he popped, actually. Was almost in range of getting equalized. Zero Zero holds it, though. C9E disengage. Now, Odomine does have his teleport. 
um, available. So I should probably just go soak up the minions that are going to run into the bottom turret there. Uh, as the rest of the team had to back off. I don't think that he would want to stick around mid if the rest of them do not collapse here. It's an interesting choice for Cloud9 right now. Uh, are they going to collapse and try and defend the secondary turret? TF is trying to take advantage. Yeah. Well, they got the mid lane turret down. Well, he backs that's off. Nice well, that's by Nuketuck, though. He ulted to reveal locations to get mid without yeah. getting jumped, and then just, like, cleared away of bottom for a bit of pressure. But, I mean, NIP have always been very risk-averse. So Cloud9 were able to get the Kennetman in wave at turret. Didn't even lose money there. Even though they failed their push top, they didn't have to pay for it with anything. And IP were unable to make a strong push, either mid or or bottom. I mean, there was one hit left on that yeah. turret. So I guess you can award them a single, single turret kill. Outer turret number three does go to Ninja Pajamas not long ago. Cloud9 Eclipse have gotten tier two mid for themselves. So a small lead on that one. Aegis gets picked up for Voidal, so his investment in getting a lot of money on himself uh, grants the team a bit more. Of course, this is with the 4.5 changes, so Locket is plus a Kindle gem in the recipe com combination. We'll see that he's going to be close to that pretty soon. Ninja Tabby as well for the Leona. Although, uh, standard stuff here, Mithy has a lot of CDR. We'll see if he finishes his item or if he goes towards Ascension late game. Oh, face checking into Ari is always very, very painful. Yep. She does ridiculous damage when the charm lands, and that's a guaranteed uh, charm to land yeah. walking into it. Now it's going to be really hard for NIP to stop this. Let's well, going down really quickly. Equalizer. Great Plus equalizer. Cool. Amazing damage comes through. C9E forced to disengage. They jump in. Nuke Duck taking a bunch of pain. Charm will not land. 0 0 off in the wings of the box. Doing a fair bit of damage as well. Can they re-engage? Look for Odwamna oh. right now. The Baron is still fighting. Odwamna very low on health. The Oh, nice shot comes in. The hook on the Yarn, and he's going to go down as well. Febovit, can he find Mithy? He gets flayed back. Huge damage comes across. Ignite is on, and down he goes. Well, three kills for NIP. Well, we talked about the importance of that next team fight equalizer. Mm -hmm. It was godly inside the Baron pit. Always very dangerous to group up, especially against double AP comps. Yeah. If Baron does make it rain on your team, then you will take increased magic damage. And uh, let's see there. Yeah, I think cuts off the exit, traps pretty much everybody in with Baron, so they're taking more damage too. And then the box for the secondary line of peel. Yeah. They have two very strong lines of wow. peel here on the NIP team. Uh, answer kill on the freeze. Yeah, the Baron gets Cloud interrupted. Nine. They go in, they find a guy back. Looks like Baron's going to region all the way back to full on this one. So Ninjas of Pajamas, they got a couple of kills. Bringing the scoreline within under 5,000 gold, so still a very close game. Neither team able to cement, cement major advantages. Cloud9 will be more wary of the Rumble ulti after that last fight. So I don't know if they will be a bit more timid around that Baron area. It was a pretty good opportunity for them, but mm -hmm. the Dragon is up as well, and it is a much, much less scary objective to go for. Yeah. Buffed a bit, 4.5. Ulti comes in, slows Zoro Zero. He does have Flash, uses it. Yes. The wall. Silver Yarn Flash. Still in the chase. Co, the Flash Randwin's used. Equalizer is not bad. He takes a land from the way out. Nuke Duck's there as well. Odom, the Rune Princess, takes a bit of pain as well. But there goes the disengage from TF. Looks like no kills picked up. Yep, they didn't get anybody, but they did get the Equalizer down. So they don't have to worry about it the second time around. Decent ward coverage from both teams around Baron Pit. And we'll probably see more sweepers coming out. I mean, two is kind of the mid-game standard for sweepers. Mm -hmm. Usually by this point, 35, 36 minutes in, they'll start swapping out a few more of those trinket war, uh, the warding trinkets for sweepers. Need more vision control. Or at the very least, buy more pink wards. Yeah, true. Honestly, these guys... Not that much uh, true sight here. Yeah, both teams are really allowed to get a lot of wards up right now. You're seeing a s giant scattering of them around uh, the Baron pit right there on both sides of the wall. A couple of defensive pink wards I can see in the Blizzard jungle of NIP. Going to be the Dragon started up now for Cloud9 Eclipse. Looks like Voidal and Fiviv going to start that one out. Ko is coming around as well. Sunfire plus Randwins for himself. Also likely to get a Banshee soon. I could actually see Visage. He's going to have some health regen in fights. Let's see what he ends up picking up in this one. 0, zero Freeze though. Happy to keep the mid lane minion wave gone. So, man, I mean... 40 minutes in almost, what a game. These guys fighting back and forth rather closely. No one's in a definitive real lead here. Yeah, because no one is really uh, making that strong effort to control the vision completely. 
It's very hard in the new patch to actually black out the screen for someone, like uh, completely make Fog of War for the other team. You really have to commit to it fully. I, okay, they picked up one more sweeper, um, but really everybody has to do their part with the pink wards. So probably just be looking at more picks coming down here. I mean, the Sivir team with Ari has a very high potential for picking somebody off. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like NIP have been able to use TF ulti to catch anyone out of position. So I'd probably give the advantage in picks over to Cloud9. Um, since Nuke Duck has been mostly trying to shove waves. And now he has a list bench. He'll probably be split pushing. Yeah, we'll see. Honestly, the teleport up for Adwamna. The teleport up for Twisted Fate for Nuke Duck. The Void Staff coming in soon for the Rise right there. But Zoro Zero. I mean, adds a death cap into the mix. He's got the Rileys as well. TF to escape with his ulti. Another defensive ulti burned. And see Zero Zero make his way around, but he's actually walking through wards right here. I mean, C9E, they own much more of the jungle with Vision. Gonna control right now the Baron Pit as well. More wards gonna go down on this one. Looks like the Baron Pit might be what these guys want. Oh, is gonna go bottom lane with his summoner teleport available. Might help him a bit. Top yeah. lane not really doing much. So they have the global advantage here. They can easily defend waves. They've got Sivir for wave clear, Ari for wave clear. They have no problem defending um, sieges. Really, they have this small window where TF's ulti is down, yet they have the rise teleport. Mm -hmm. So they have a small advantage there. And really, they just need vision more around the middle of the map so they can catch NIP in a rotation with the Ari and with the Sivir. So all they need is catch one person out of position. They've got plenty of move speed to capitalize on anybody being caught. Okay. So safety in numbers for NIP. We'll see if they can keep themselves from getting caught out. Or if Cloud9 Eclipse can make these openings happen. Blue buff right now. Looks like it's going to be given to Fabivan, actually. Adwamna has enough mana for himself anyway. Yarnin and Freeze going to battle over Pink Ward. It's going to go NIP's way with this one. Still about five. Actually, 6,000 gold slightly growing here. Cloud9 Eclipse getting a... Small gold lead in this one. Alberto level 17. These people farming a lot, waiting around for the late games in this one. No one waiting on the bottom side of the map. Again, the battle being for the Baron Pit here. The wards, very much the objective for both teams. TF ulti yeah. doesn't even need wards. Sees him anyway. <laughs> Not for long, though. Cheating. Not for long. Now, they need to get pressure on one of these lanes here. Uh, they have TF shoving mid. They sort of have Cloud9 cornered here. Uh, and they're going to make them respond to the minion wave that they've created at middle. Good little move there from NIP. They're not getting caught around Baron. There's not enough true sight for them to have to face check it. So they divert Cloud9's attention very successfully. Let's see what we find of this one, honestly. Slower game. Farm's coming in. 289 minions on Rise. Void Staff is done. So he's very offense focused. Chain vest grab. That might be a GA. Could be Randwitz. Once they uh, get a full tank Shivana, then the options for tower dives will actually open up, though. He's got two slots to go. Yeah, so it's a long ways off. And they don't want to do it before then, because if they do it before then, then again, they have two lines of very strong peel here for NIP. They've got the equalizer and they have the box from Thresh. You do not want to dive in onto that unless you know you have a very large advantage. Okay, so slow and steady gonna win the race for these guys. Wouldn't be a NIP game without it. Uh, nice long laning phase for everybody. Voidal, not, they don't even let him get any of his last hits right there. Scumbag Yerner just like takes the entire wave and says, at some point you'll gain gold. They're feeling very strong about the team fight though. If they can catch somebody out, uh, again, we already mentioned so many times. Leona Ult, Ari, Sivir. This is so much potential here for Cloud9 to catch somebody. Uh, if they can grab one, it'll be a huge win for them. They're just continually trying to force over by Baron. But again, look at all this true sight they're trying to work with. Only one pink ward in the unupgraded sweepers is not going to be enough. They need to upgrade some of those sweepers. Because look, there's a one ward still inside Baron Pit they haven't been able to grab. And NIP can continue split pushing, trying to draw them out across the map. Yeah. That's why you always pink ward in the Baron pit. Like, never ever try to sneak Baron unless you pink ward inside the pit itself, because you Hard will. Force again. Miss Gotta watch that equalizer. Well, it's gonna be 0 0 off on the side. Will he jump in? Will he do much with the equalizer? 
Looks like the reveal going to put Voidal in the mix. Going to get a slow on zero zero. Misses the E. Lantern is not going to find anybody. Several ult down. Gonna be just Can they wait it out? Spells. Two spells for one on this one. Rise ult is down too. All this move speed is gone here for Cloud9. And they even snuck a ward in as well. So there's another 10 seconds before you can even get That was up. a very favorable exchange for NIP, even though no action went down. Yeah, and Huge, Duke's huge favorable exchange for them. They can shove with a cannon minion here. TF should make quick work of that turret. NIP do a good job in the late game. This is why they like going to the late game. They're very calm and collected. Very, very calm. Didn't force the issue. The threat of Rumble stopping really any of the Baron attempts there. Anubis just walking back and forth between waves. 376 minions. Before, I was saying the only guy who was breaking 10 CS a minute was Fabivin, the Ari. Now, no ult. beating him There's in There's no ult for TF here. Well, gonna so be. he's got to walk his way all the way back to the pit. But it's on top of Ward. Some good damage comes in from the Eco Wise. Still can tanking Baron. E come back in for this one. Odramna takes the Baron debuff, reducing his damage pretty heavily. Now the same for Fabivin. Oh, over the wall. man, again. Nothing grabbed. Culling comes across, doesn't find much, though. Baron makes it rain. NIP forced to back off again. Freeze that half. Aggro's Baron. NIP want this fight. They've got better positioning, though. C9E split up in two different halves right here. Better poke comes across. We'll draw on the half HP. <laughs> Solar players back up. And they're going to go in for this one. Odomna's caught out. Stun lands. Rune Prison's not going to mean much. Down he goes. Febivin takes a card to the back. Jump in from Hilberto. Lands Oopsie, a bit more damage. Far. Overextends, though, and goes down. One for one. And meanwhile, minions are pushing down turrets on different sides of the map. But NIP had the inside track now towards the mid lane. Yeah, that was definitely too much for Hilberto to go for. NIP still have the momentum, though. Going to be some decent wave. Their hook's not going to land, but they've got minions. But looks like they're going to back off. Afraid of Ari coming back in with home guards. That's Sivir wave clear. Oh, okay. Solar Flare landing. He falls in 0 0. Some good damage going to come back. Coast slowed down. Hooked in as well. Half HP. Dragon gets him out a little bit of the way, but there's more damage on the 0 0. It's going to be two kills picked up. Bebevin getting both actually from over the wall. Oh. Here and in the melee range goes down. Bit up more than he could chew. Oh, Freeze shot him in the face. Flashing in to die there. What is Yarn in? All right. Exciting little bit of action there. Now, this is the very end of it, where the three-man Cloud9 group um, actually are able to make NIP stick around, which they do not want since they burned all their ultis. Uh, Fabibin comes in at the very end. He does not have Ari ult, so can't jump over to join anything. But uh, the TF stun right there, locking up Niren in as soon as he jumps in. And again, Cloud9 return to the Baron Pit, and again, TF ulti reveals what they're trying to do. TF shows with Freeze, but the stun comes in, and Fabivin just goes in. Down goes Freeze right away. I had no word for that. He just goes and like, well, he's disappeared. Freeze got thawed. Melted. That's the word. I don't know. Thawed sounds great. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Tomna is able to send him to Rune Prison. How about that? Um, and yeah. Fabivin actually executes the sentence there. But that's a huge win. Cloud9, they finally get what they were going after. They return to the Baron, mm -hmm. and they actually get it this time, catching Freeze out. NIP were a little disoriented after that last fight. We're not able to regroup. Rip up goes to Ari. Interesting. He, it, just, he just got one off killing Freeze. Man, uh, they, uh, they were doing so well, too. NIP was doing so well yeah. pulling Cloud9 around. Even though Cloud9 had this uh, pretty big lead mm -hmm. and this stronger team fight, NIP were positionally outplaying them. Yeah. Until that one misstep. It only takes one misstep. And yeah. remember, it all started with Kha'Zix jumping back in to trade back a yeah. kill. And IP had gotten a clean kill. TF ulti, they took down Ryze, one of the biggest parts of the C9 team. But they wanted more. Kha'Zix went in and could not click the lantern back out. From yep. then, it was uh, hard rotations for NIP to make up for. I guess that's kind of what happens as well. Like, if you're the one down in gold, you make all these great plays. But if you suck yourself into a just dedicated fight, Mm -hmm. You saw exactly what happened with that one. Yeah, so it's really easy for um, you to just make one mistake because Cloud9 have this amazing chase team. Like, mm -hmm. they have all the speed and they have this great team fight power. You have to play it perfectly. If you make one misstep, then you're going to lose out on not only Baron, but it uh, looks like they got Dragon as well. Dragon, I believe, actually went to NIP in picture in ah. picture. So Ninja's a jam because, uh, yeah, Seen and E ran over to start Baron after the few catches. So oh, NIP so they like, traded. Yeah, NIP with, like, I think it was just. Um, Freeze and uh, Nuke Duck took that one down. Um, I also like that during the chase, the replay we had a second ago, they even took those two kills with a single Foxfire each one. They just like shot over the wall like invisible and like knocked them down. Efficiency.
Yeah, very well secured. Didn't even have to aim. Just press W and it happened. All right, TF does as a, have his teleport once again, but it's going to be, uh, they need him at the turret to wave clear, so I don't think he's going to be split pushing here. Yeah. Can't wait for a teleport in. There's also the drawback whenever you're teleporting into a team fight late. There's a giant circle on the ground that tells the enemy where you're going to land. You with all sorts of skill shots. Like that hook right there on the minion, down it went. Help the team pick it up with this turret's down to half HP right now. Baron buff on, I think, four-fifths of Cloud and Eclipse. So some good regen for everyone but Yernin. Silly Sivir died in the last fight. And we're waiting just in between every wave. They're going to try to go in, find some damage. So here we go again. Ku hovering on the outside here makes me think that they're looking for a good engage. Good equalizer. All they have to do is back off. It's done. Voidal goes in, loses half his HP. Ko jumps in as well, uh, gets hooked in, has the shield, and goes down. Two for one so far. NAP's favorite three kills whoa. coming across. A lot of deaths on all sides. Hilberto into the back lines. He's trying to get away, goes down. Looks like two surviving members for each team. All right, so they get inside the base and they get the buildings down that they wanted. It could have been cleaner, though. Uh, Equalizer goes down. If, if uh, Voidal did not engage over that Equalizer, mm -hmm. Uh, the rest of the team could have added uh, some damage and backup to it, but kind of cut off the rest of the team there with that one. Yeah. All said and done, though, three for three, and they get both the turret. As see, everybody else is backing off. Voidal's going in, so he's going to go down, but they do have the damage to back it up here. Ko's able to uh, soak up a lot from that turret. The pivot goes right into the heart of the team to take on everyone. And eventually, Ryze will be able to get across the line to clean up. So uh, three versus three, two... Two buildings down. Big cleanup there for Cloud9. Because yeah. as a short-range team, they do have the toughest time with the first inhibitor turret to go down. Now that they have one down, they have a much clearer path. Yeah. You saw like how hesitant they were. You talked about like when Voida won in, the rest of the team was like way back. Yeah, so, everybody's everybody's uh, has the same idea. Retreat, yeah. retreat. <laughs> Except Voidal. We gotta well, kill them now. Voidal went in. Yeah. You're in those like waiting for equalizer to end, and it was like completely in turret range. We like did nothing for five seconds. Yeah. I was like, guys, I'm helping. And then just knocked the turret down afterwards. But yeah, honestly, nine, two, and three on Tevin's Ari. That's working so well for him. For last pick, mm -hmm. pick that knew he was fighting against TF in the mid lane. One in minions, though not by the end game at this point. You're seeing TF wave through Rick, but oh no, still on the chase. Good harpoon gonna stop him though. It's a gigantic slow. Yeah, you got a few too many bullets in the face as well. Man, he does have the last item, Guardian Angel, though. This is maxed out Rise. It's one of the scariest things in the game. Full item Rise, even upgraded boots mm -hmm. for more flashes, more flashy plays. More teleports, too. He actually runs faster after flashing and teleporting now as well. It's going to be all kinds of fun dealing with this man. Level 18 for the entire lineup on both sides, except for Mithy, who's only 16. All right, so both AD carries with the one item, one defensive item, I look like they're opting for Banshee's Veil. I like that one, uh, rather than trying to cleanse any of the uh, CCs mm -hmm. or go with a Guardian Angel. Yeah, I think it's a lot Blocking of one spell is pretty much the highest impact that you're gonna look for with that one defensive item. Right now, though, five versus uh, four. Cloud9 just shoving down outer turrets here as uh, Alberto was forced to clear top lane. So only in Hiv turrets and Nexus turrets left right here. C9E looked down to the bottom lane. Alberto. Now Nuke Duck going to be part time defending top against these super minions. Looks like he times it right though. He waits until the wave dies at bottom, then heads over, clears the wave, and has 30 seconds to get his way back down to the bottom lane. And looks like Nuke Duck will be there in time to defend once more. All right, their eyes are going to be on who can we land a stun on here for NIP. Uh, they want to lock somebody down who does not have a Banshee's Veil. Hopefully who does not have a Guardian Angel as well. So he's looking at uh, Ko or, or Voidal. Even locking down the front line is not bad. TF focuses the first person. He does have Void Staff. He's got plenty of penetration. Burning down the front line is uh, actually a good strat here for NIP. They've got plenty of peel. As we mentioned before, the Equalizer plus box is very good at defending versus turret dives. 
CNNV gonna lurk their way into the brush with their Voidal actually gonna be the one scouting out. They look for the flank, they get the stun on the Zoro Zero, and here comes the team, Cyberulti in tow as well. Huge burst, Nuke Duck goes down, Voidal in the front lines does not care if he dies though, because they're gonna find more kills with the team. One for one so far, Hobarto in the back lines, looks for Yerenin, but three kills already picked up for C9E, and they look for the front door. Yeah, great job there by C9E, collapsing, catching them out of guard. I don't think they have to even go inhibitor turrets. Should be the end of the game here. Uh, the inhibitor respawns, but you know, they've still got a super minion here. Cloud9 Eclipse gonna look to close out game one of this grand final best of five. Nexus turret number one under fire. Number two about to go down as well. 52 minutes into the game and a phenomenal team effort, but Cloud9 Eclipse will win game one, the grand finals of the Challenger Spring Series. 52 minute game. Yep. Uh, not much of a surprise there. We thought it yeah. would be a long one with yeah. NIP. And Cloud9, they did go with option number two. Yeah. More late game power, beat them at their own game. Yeah, and despite how hard Odromna got camped, too, he started 0 3 0 on Rise. So much attention was spent up there, but NIP unable to capitalize off those kills to do much more. The turret stayed equal. Dragons, actually, almost all of them went to Cloud9 Eclipse as well, and the outskilling worked. Yeah, it's been said time and time again, even if you kill Rise early, he's going to scale up late game. So, want to take advantage of the little window that you do have. Yeah, so I actually want to bring up a replay real quick, though. It's a really sweet hook by Mythi. Even though they lost the game, it's uh, it's pretty fun stuff for Mythi. If you want to bring that one up there. Oh, yeah. So this was the, the best fight for NIP that they got. This was started off by the Equalizer, and then the hook by uh, Mythi across the very thick Baron wall there. They were able to capitalize and get a lot done. But after they won the fight, there was a little bit of indecision here. They're like, whoa, should we start the Baron up again? Take a little bit of extra damage there. And they didn't get much out of it. Yeah, unfortunately, like, they started on it, but they had a couple members dead already. And, and the fact that two members of C9E were still alive, I actually kind of want to see the second half of that one because, um, yeah, basically, they, they stopped the Baron on time. Like, Baron yeah. was at half HP. NIP had started fighting it already. And it was just the two of them kind of coming in there and stopping the entire exchange, getting a kill as well for it. But yeah, C9E, basically, the story was... Despite all the good early moves by NIP, and in general, like NIP fought pretty well, no objectives could go blue team's way. So, you know, you stopped everything from getting lost. They never gave up Baron. Very few dragons overall. And just kills were just kills for NIP. Yeah. I also want to point out that Ko did go with that heavy counter jungling style with Shivana with the Feral Flare, and it mm -hmm. worked out pretty well for them. His ganks were definitely uninspiring as he died down bottom. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it still worked out. They had a good game plan and they executed well. Yeah, well, Kratz in the late game. So, guys, that's one Nexus down, at least two more to go. In return, it's time for the rematch between Cloud and Eclipse and the Ninjas in Pajamas. We'll also be joined by Dexter from CLG. 2014 Challenger Series Spring Playoffs will be right back. <laughs> 